Hello there, this is Critical from Critical Media, just taking a look at the 2023 release of Suichi, another edition in the Junji Ido Story Collection. And what we usually do with this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now, I will admit it, uh, not too much on the bonus material side of things, but let's just walk around the exterior for now. So very consistent with the other story collection releases. Again, a matte finish. I love this painted style. It almost has that nice uh, hearkening to like that St. Lucia kind of praise. And then the, yes, as usual with these gloss spines, very on point. I love this. It's like a, a you know, it's like a dark purple lavender. I don't know, you tell me. But I like how they use the uh, one little image there from the tomb story. Or sorry, should I say coffin? <laughs> There's tombs right there. But anywho, uh, your typical fare on the exterior, as always, was just a brief synopsis. And the book itself is about 400 pages, or just over. So the eye is pretty decent. You know, it's nice and glued in proper. Um, but as usual with uh, Ido, he doesn't really use too many two-page spreads, and you definitely won't get any in this book. I usually like that about him. After all, these books usually came out in like magazine format, so using the two-page spreads were... Not really common. But anywho, at least jumping into uh, story, story and plot points. You know, being a story collection, unlike the others that I've done on the channel, this story, or should I say this release, it's predominantly all about Suichi. So, and it's somewhat linear, but at the same time anthology based. It actually reminds me a lot of uh, Tomi. Like if you ever get that white clad book, it's very similar where Tomi is a, like an anthology series. This is an anthology series as well. But there's like, you know, just certain times where it has a linking story or there is a little bit of a linear path to it. So, yeah, at the same time, I would say there's a bit of sequential storytelling. But heart and heart, I would say overall, it's an anthology. Anyways, and ironically with Suichi, there is a bit of more uh, common ground too. Um, but the one part of it I'd say that helps with the whole linear aspect is the fact that it's a recurring cast. So, yeah, it's this brother and sister. So, yeah, Mishina, pretty much the protagonist, I'd say, outside of Suichi. Uh, her brother, Yusuke. Uh, and they're always visiting their family, or should I say their cousins, over in uh, Fukazawa. So, yeah, it's uh, Kuichi, the oldest cousin, his sister, uh, forgive me, Sayuri. And then, of course, Suichi himself. Um, but, anywho, it does pretty much does serve as a, just an introductory story and... Kind of like, you know, they're kind of meeting each other for a long period of time, so they kind of forgot each other, and lo and behold, they remind themselves of how weird Suichi is, this loner, this very self-centered, spoiled, pessimistic, like he's always down on others, he has a bit of a vain streak, a superiority complex, you're already hearing it, he's a very multi-dimensional character. He's super annoying. I'm sure we all kind of grew up with a kid in class who was kind of like that. But, man, anyways, he only wants, like, the worst for people. And at the same time, he only wants the best for himself. He keeps these nails in his mouth, hence the uh, opening there where you see this. He, heck, he even has really good accuracy spitting them at people. Uh, but, anywho, uh, the overall story is that it's pretty much just him constantly cursing people and he loves playing with voodoo dolls probably the one aspect i'd say that has a bit of a metaphysical or paranormal element to it uh but yeah it's pretty much just these constant ideas of how much he gets under people's skin how much of it is really a curse or just their own machinations in their mind of what's really happening um probably one of my favorite outcomes of this book um uh, yeah if i flipped the page prior you would have seen it you're gonna love it believe me um, but anywho, uh, yes, you have a, it's kind of split up with these other stories and probably one of the few deviations here, uh, a story about uh, this different woman here, forgive me, uh, Yumiko, and she's not related to any of them. She's just a visitor in town. She comes upon the village. She sees these, yeah, these voodoo dolls and whatnot. And this guy, I swear, he's a sadist to the extreme. Um, but thankfully, there's always this person to check him, his older brother, Koichi. Believe me, when you read this book, you're probably going to end up loving him. Because he's the only person who ever chastises uh, Suichi whenever he gets out of hand. Oh, man. 
But anywho, um, it's an overall pretty decent little narrative here. It just reminds you how deep the rabbit hole goes with him. Like, the, the, the extent of which he'll get under somebody's skin. Even cause them to almost uh, harm themselves. It's very creepy. Uh, but anywho, like I said, there's a bit of paranormal at the same time. You, you have to wonder how much of it is in your own mind kind of aspect to it. But uh, probably one of my favorite pages here. This is something I remember from years ago when I first came across these books. This particular panel. Man, I don't know what it is. About, I, well, I guess I kind of do now. It's kind of this weird thing where Ido, and this is kind of a testament to how good he is as an artist. It's a low angle shot. But at the same time, it has this three-quarter side-on look to it because she's kind of like raising her head. This is such a convincing panel. I don't know why, but I've, this is always like centered in my mind for many years. I don't know why. Um, but anywho, uh, yes, uh, you keep getting this idea that this kid gets, just keeps getting so many different chances. Like I said, he's kind of spoiled. Um, probably this little uh, narrative here with the teacher who tries to help him out. Kind of sees a little bit of himself in Suichi, but uh, you know ends up getting turned by the dark side, so to speak. Man, I like how this one, this whole idea, kind of plays out. It's creepy in all the right ways. It's kind of hard to explain. I guess if you're looking for horror, it's like yeah, if you were expecting to be creeped out, well done. And like I mentioned, probably one of the other aspects of this book that has a paranormal aspect. Just this uh, whole teacher of cloth story that becomes kind of a running shtick throughout it. Because, yeah, out of nowhere, this, his teacher gets replaced by this doll. And nobody seems to mind or really explain why or why they're not bothered by this doll walking around. It's so obvious. But, um, yeah, just as the level of how these curses work. And, like, the kind of levels and kind of the serious nature that it can get to. I always appreciate the fact that because they're young, it's almost like Ido doesn't want to kill them all off at the same time. So I appreciate that he has a little bit of restraint. But man, some pretty on point art here, man. Like, it'll definitely get to you. And I like how there's red herrings throughout the book. Like, things that are introduced, they don't really uh, explain it right away. Just like on this page here, you're probably not even seeing it. But at the same time, it comes back later. Like, it just makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, again, that uh, St. Lucia thing. The whole uh, candles uh, wrapped around your head aspect. But anywho, just that story, hands down, that whole teacher of cloth angle. It goes on for a few uh, stories, but it's pretty damn good. Um, oh, yeah, the Suichi birthday um, issue where it's it kind of gets into like the history of him and his grandmother and a quote-unquote uh, twin brother angle. Very intriguing ending. I'll definitely say that. I like how they at least use these black pages to, you know, imprint that it's a flashback kind of angle. Very on point. Very creepy, actually. And like I said, like, there are times where you can't tell if there's a real supernatural effect going on or if it's really just p happening in people's minds. But yeah, I'll definitely say this, though. His voodoo seems real. Like, legit. Um, but anywho... I just like how different, like, each story can kind of get while still being connected. You know, I, like I said, it, it kind of handles that same idea with Tomi. It's an anthology and yet still somewhat of a linear story. But yeah, very, very intriguing kind of angles here. I like how characters will play along with Suichi. Like, they know he's weird, so they'll kind of play along to a certain extent. And then not realize how serious things get. Man. Definitely impressive. Oh, and I always like this uh, particular story here, too. The man who keeps protecting his cedar trees. Oh, and probably, personally, my personal favorite of the book. Look at that. I just know, knew it right off the bat. Four-layered room. Man, what an interesting angle, literally. And at the same time, it has, like, it's, it's some of his best work, and at the same time, it introduces something I think is personally horrific. Because it can actually happen... And Ido sells it so damn well. Essentially, his older brother, Kuichi, the one you're probably going to like in the story, he's just studying studying for an exam. Keeps being bothered by uh, Suichi because he keeps running around in the uh, attic, annoying him. On purpose, by the way. Um, but I just like how, yeah, there are several pages where he's kind of showing the, yeah, there it is, the design of the four-layered room. Basically, a room of silence. I just like the constant 
you'll see it several times and it also even plays out in the narrative as you're kind of seeing with the way the panels are laid out it's probably one of my favorites and also there's kind of again uh an unexplained red herring but um yeah you're probably kind of hinting on it on that page that very real moment in this book or that particular story uh, and then of course uh, probably the same spine design this is from that story coffin basically his grandfather builds himself his own yeah coffin and eerily enough he uh, passes away soon enough soon enough after but man you're getting a lot of striking art in this one you're this is where you're getting a lot of that very detailed Edo work and this is what I meant earlier where earlier in the book you get an idea that is it happening in people's minds? And by the time you're starting to read these uh, ending chapters, yeah, there's definitely something way bigger going on, a far more supernatural angle. Because too many other eyeballs just start to notice what's going on. And possibly a, one of the best finales in most of these uh, story collections, rumors, men. So aside from... A, re a returning character. This is actually one of the few stories of uh, Ito's that kind of crosses several of his ongoing characters. So yeah, you have Suichi in this one. And it's just about uh, a bunch of kids. Um, yeah, as usual, as the name suggests. Rumors beget rumors. You can create a false reality. And therefore, certain things can happen. There's a little bit of romance and intrigue. And so you have the like, little cute rumors that go on to the big curse level rumors. I love that angle. It almost reminds me of a, a story from uh, one of the uh, Umetsu books, uh, one of the Oro Orochis. Uh, but anywho, uh, this is one of the few books that actually has, as I said, like a recurring character from another series, uh, Fuchi. So you may uh, recognize Fuchi from another story. I think it was what, um, fashion model, which makes sense considering they're looking at a magazine here. But man, you want to talk about ominous threat? You're going to love some of the final panels in this book. Especially, yeah, this story. Some of the best uh, art you're probably going to see. So, not bad. I mean, I make it makes sense. He wrote this around what? like, um, Or at least the one of the publications was, what, 2011? From Asahi Shimbun? But still. This is a definite strong package. Surprisingly more entertaining than I thought. I thought I was going to hate Suichi throughout the whole thing. I kind of do. I think he will too. But... He becomes more and more interesting. Like, after all, you're reading horror for a reason, right? So you definitely don't see some of the things that come in from left field. And I definitely appreciate it, that about this release. But anywho, as usual at this point, it's no longer about me. Hopefully you guys got your own opinions about the book. And I wouldn't mind seeing them, seeing them down in the comments down below, as always. Y'all folks take care and enjoy the rest of your day.